Hey yo, this is Dash, and today I'm gonna talk to you and tell you just how much money I made this past weekend on a catering event where I cooked a whole brisket and some pork shoulder. One of the most frequently asked questions or one of the biggest things that I, people ask or inquire about is how much money did you make? <laughs> and while that is a very, you know, it, it's a loaded question, a loaded topic, talking about money, specifically dollars and cents, and what I can make and what I do make on my little side hustle catering business that I run out of my house. Hey, yo, this is Dash. Get ready. So, let's talk about this. This past weekend, I had a friend of mine, a car friend, he called me up and he says, hey man, well, he, he texts me, he says, when you get a chance, give me a call. So I called him up and I'm like, hey man, what's going on? He says, hey, I know this is last minute, but I was wondering if you might be able to cater a party for me. And I'm like, all right, well, when do you need it? Because I've had people call me that morning for something they need that evening. That's not gonna work. But <clears throat> he said, tomorrow, he says, my daughters are having a birthday party. Really would like uh, it if I could get some food from you. I really wanna get some food from you. I'd rather get food from you, support you know, a friend and a small business as opposed to a big corporation. I'm like, like bet. Thank you. So I appreciate that. And, and we're talking. He says, oh, probably going to have about 15, 20 people. I said, okay, well, what I can do for you, I said, I'll do, how about I do a whole brisket and some pork shoulder, okay? I said, I can do 10 pounds of pork shoulder, and I'm going to apologize now. I'm standing outside, and I think it's it's cicada season. I think that's what those, the loud bugs are, so sorry. Anyway, I tell him I'll do a whole brisket for him, which will work out to be about 8 pounds of brisket and 10 pounds of pork shoulder. That's like a pack, a whole pack of uh, pork shoulder. And you know, we can go from there if he wants anything else. He said, no, 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 that's fine. You know, we can do that. He's like, how much is it? I said, it's 125 for the whole brisket. Now, that's what I charge for a brisket. I know there's some people out there that are charging a lot more. There's some people that are charging a little bit less. Though the cost in which your brisket or what you charge is gonna vary, by where you are the pork shoulder because he got a volume you know he's buying 10 pounds of it uh, and that's why I suggested 10 pounds he got a volume discount I do a volume discount at five pounds and another one at 10 pounds so he got the pork shoulder pulled pork for $11 per pound so we can do math and this is the reason why I'm standing by this wall we can do math we have the brisket at 125 we have the pork shoulder at 111 and then I charge him $15 for delivery and that's not what I charge him but to make it even numbers, right? Um, to make it even numbers, we have $250 is where we start for this for this cook. For the monies I took in, I received. Now, one of the other things too that's a little bit different from a lot of folks, I charge up front. And the reason I charge up front is because I wanna make sure that people are serious about their orders. If you, well, one, I've been burnt before, and two, I want to make, really make sure that people are serious about their orders. If they pay up front, they have a more vested interest in trying to actually make sure that they pay and, and get their food, okay? <clears throat> so I start with $250. Now I go out that afternoon, Saturday afternoon, and I go to the Restaurant Depot. And you know, here's some clips of me in the Restaurant Depot.
When I, when I cook a whole brisket, I'm looking for a, an about 15 pound, 15 to 16 pound brisket because by the time it's said and done, all said and done, with brisket, I'm gonna lose about 50% of the gross weight for the cooked weight. With that being said, a whole brisket, again, I'm charging $125. It works out to be a little bit less than $16 per pound. Now, the pork shoulder, same thing. I have about a 50% loss. It's probably like 50, excuse me, it's probably about 45% loss, but it's, a, I just, round numbers, it's about 50%. So I knew that I wanted to give him a 10, 10 pounds of pulled pork. I bought a 19 and some change pound pork shoulder or, or pack of pork shoulder and it ended up costing me, well, here's the receipt. So, it ended up costing me almost $80, right? So we have our $250 minus our $80 leaves me $170. That's not bad, you know, $170 for a couple, you know, a couple hours of work. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet because we have to subtract the other things that make this cook happen. And if you have seen some of my other videos where I talk about catering costs, usually I say, or usually I recommend, that whatever your food cost is, you triple that food cost, and then that'll give you the amount of money that you should be charging for a particular event or for whatever it is that you're cooking. With that being said, we have our $80 times three is 240. I ended up getting $250 because of the fact that, like I said, I charged a little bit for delivery, but that, that number, that three times, it works out. Now the pork shoulder, I make a little bit more money on the pet pork shoulder than I do on the brisket, but as a whole, it works out where I'm tripling in what I'm charging for what I paid out for the cost of the food. Now, there are other things involved as far as getting a cook done. So now this is just off of the top of my head and I just wrote these numbers down so I could not have to do the math in my head while on camera. So the seasonings that I used, I probably used about $5 worth of seasonings for both the brisket and the pork shoulder. The foil pans that I used, I used a few different, a few foil pans for the cook and as well as for when I wrap the food up to give it to the, the people or to the person who, who got the food. My, now, your cost of your fire, the cost of your cook is going to vary. This particular fire this particular cook I use my number one drum I'm using a number one drum my number one drum runs on charcoal and a split or two of wood the charcoal that I was using I had a 30 pound bag of charcoal that I got for 10 bucks a few years ago actually so I know I didn't use more than 10 pounds of charcoal so I'm gonna say that the cost of my cook was three dollars and then I have miscellaneous, so for like aluminum foil, for the gloves that I use, for the, for the cups that I put the jus in, other things like that, about $2. So we can take those numbers, the $5 for seasonings, the $2 for foil pans, the charcoal cost, and the miscellaneous fees, we're going to say that's 12 bucks. So $12 in other stuff, right? So we have $170 minus the $12 gives us 158 bucks. Okay, so by the time it's all said and done for a few hours work, $150, if I were to do a cook, every, if I were to do the same cook every weekend and make $150, I can do, I can do quick math, that's $600 a month. $600 a month is actually pretty decent money to be doing just a few hours of work, okay? Now, with those things being said, I wanna recap a little bit, and I wanna talk about the how you make money when you're cooking. You make money when you're cooking by cooking the most food that you can at one time and reducing the cost of your fire. If my fire is inefficient now, if I were cooking one brisket for that same $3, I would be losing money. I would be not make, I wouldn't, not losing. I would not be profiting as much. But because I cook the pork shoulder, and the brisket at the same time, my profit is a little bit higher. 
Now, of course, your mileage may vary. You could cook more things. If you can cook more things at the same time, if you could reduce the cost of your charcoal, if you could do a lot of different things, you can make more money in volume while you're cooking. Just a little pro tip. Now, with those things being said, let me get back to what I do with my money and because of my business. Now, we're sitting at $158, okay? Again, that's respectable. 150, 160 bucks, again, a weekend for doing one day's work is not bad, especially when I slept through most of the cook because I started it Saturday night and it rolled through Sunday morning. Now, again, I'm telling you what I did with mine, all right? So I had $158. From that $158, it just so happened that my P.O. box has come due for renewal. The P.O. box that I had, it cost me $84 for every six months. Now, the reason why my P.O. box cost me so much is because when I went to my local post office, they didn't have any of the smaller, cheaper, less expensive P.O. boxes. They only had the, the second size up. So it cost me $84 a, every six months. Now, could I, yes, downgrade to another one, but then I would have to change the P.O. box number and then uh, I have to change all of the videos. And, uh, we're not going through that. Seriously, dogs? Chill, dog. Chill. All right. We're going to have to play through it. So my $84 from the $158 leaves $74, okay? Now, again, I take the profit or I take the monies when I, when I have it. I spend it on things or I reinvest it back into my business. So the first reinvestment was the peel box. All right, again, the 158 minus the 84 leaves me 74 bucks. Now, it just so happened, again, my website, the brbque.com website, where I sell my stickers. I used to sell the shirts on, on that website. I don't sell the shirts through that website any longer. I actually sell the shirts through Teespring. There's a Teespring link as well as a link to the to the uh, sticker merchandise site. They're listed down below. But that uh, website, brbqe.com, the URL, I have to pay for that. You don't get URLs for free, all right? That URL, because I was able to get a volume discount for renewing it for multiple years, as well as I was able to get a discount because I found a coupon, a online coupon code for 20% off, and I actually got the website through namecheap.com. 20% off of my purchase. For five years, I renewed my website. It ended up costing me $53 with all the tax and the other fees and things like that. So 74 minus 53, leaves me 21 bucks now again could I have taken this money and run with it and and done something else with it yes but I use I choose to use my business funds to reinvest in my business so that I don't have to take my personal funds and put that into my business because what's the point of having a business if you can't put the money that you make from your business back into the business that's hustling backwards so now with that $21, right? You're like, oh man, you could, I could go put some fuel in my car or I could go buy something for 20. Oh, let's, let's get a case of beer, all right? How about that? Nah, I don't do that. You know what I did with that $21? The back end of the brbque.com website is a Wix, W-I-X website. That Wix site is how I sell the things on the website, okay? There's always something behind what you see in front. That Wix site cost me $19.90 per month to host. So by the time this cook, this past weekend, was all said and done, my actual profit was $1 and about 10 cents. Now, is that something that you are willing to take on? Is every single weekend the same? No. But this particular weekend, and one of the things that I say from time to time is take it while I have it. 
So while a business has some income, I will pay for some of the things that the business has to pay for. Now, of course, typically whenever I do a big cook or if I have a big cook, I will reinvest in my business. So I will use those funds or that time to purchase the foil pans, stock up on my seasonings. I will go ahead and get wood delivered. I will buy a few hundred pounds of charcoal. So those are the things that I do with my money for my business so that it is self-sustaining. So what you do with your money is another story, but here that was my story of how much money I made this past weekend off of cooking a brisket and some pork shoulder. Oh, water, baby. <laughs> hey, look. Guys, down below is listed the P.O. Box. If you want to send us something to try, a sauce, a seasoning, some jerky, feel free, something funny, something for us to try, send it to the P.O. Box below. It's always listed in the description. But Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Join us on Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We go live for two hours. In the first hour, we talk about barbecue or something barbecue business related. The second hour, come as you please and bring your flesh. And we talk about anything. And then we talk about anything. All right. Well, not her, but me. So. Sometimes yeah. I pee. Yes, you do. So you want to tell them, thank, thank them again for watching? Thank you again for watching. And we'll see you. Oh, I'm sorry. And please do subscribe and we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you, Bye. guys.